Hey, how are you? I hope everybody is doing well. It is a Wednesday. It's Wednesday night, 10.46 p.m. Got off work at 10 p.m. and here I am back at home. Uh, blessed to have a job, privileged to have a job. Um, every time I go to work, it's an opportunity to serve, to serve people, to love on people, to uh, be the light wherever I am. We're called to be the salt and light, uh, to love on people and to uh, just by your actions without totally like directly professing it. People know that Christ shows up in that place. God is there. Uh, but you're witnessing to people. Uh, and you're being fruitful wherever you're at. And you're working hard uh, serving people and to glorify God. And you're also helping that place. You are responsible for being alert and sober-minded. All of us are personally responsible for that, accountable. Uh, but like I said yesterday... We are responsible for a lot of people, whether we notice, know it or not. We are the ones with wisdom and knowledge from God. Uh, we have insight into uh, certain situations, specific situations, especially the ones that we specifically pray about. We are gifted in many ways, uh, but we are strong and we are courageous and we are bold. And then we know who fights our battles and we know the power that we have inside. So wherever you are, be alert and sober-minded because the enemy is... Uh, prowling around looking for somebody to devour and it's going to be your people in your house or at your workplace or in your community uh somebody is always there to do something destructive or evil uh well not always they're not always there but there is uh there's some somebody that might be right on that threshold uh and they just need to see the love of christ so love on them i mean uh approach them a lot of people want to be introverted i mean naturally but uh you need to go right up and you need to go talk to all right, and they're not used to that. And uh, yeah, all right. So this will be a three-minute devotion. It is titled, An Epiphany of Christ. An Epiphany of Christ, it is from Ephesians 3. You gotta read that. I used to read the, the Bible verses with this, but these go too long anyway. They're only meant to be about uh, six minutes or so. The three-minute reading of the devotion and a three-minute uh, insight. But uh, I totally gotta reiterate things because through repetition, that's how we grow doing things again and again, just just like uh, strength training or cardiovascular. Uh, yeah, you become more like that the more you read it, the more you learn about Father God and His Son Jesus and the apostles, disciples, their lives, and the people in the Bible and the Bible stories, the more you become like uh, uh, those people that um, God is well pleased in. Uh, so we want to do that. We want Everything we do, wants to. Uh, we want it to glorify God and be honorable to Him and for Him to... Um, say to us uh, now every day but especially when we get up to heaven that well done uh, good and faithful service and for him to say uh, that is my son that I am proud of and uh, so it's pretty awesome so Christ is in us the Holy Spirit is in us we're supposed to become more Christ like so in all things that you do do it to glorify God but it's got to be honorable holy and righteous all right very cool loving on people Loving God first with everything you got and uh, loving people, loving your neighbors, yourself. And just do that every day and you'll see. You'll see it start to work. If everybody just does their part and doesn't get lazy, slothful, the Bible says. All right, three minute devotions. Epiphany of Christ. An epiphany that you just get it. I was like Genesis that God created everything. Come on and go outside and look at the beautiful weather and everything, and every animals, every species, the eye, the human eye, the water, the birds. God created them. Amazing. He's your heavenly father and he loves you. That's an epiphany right there. You really gotta think about that. And really think about John 3, 16. If that just happened. Okay, it happened 220 plus years ago, maybe now. Uh, if that just happened. I like it was yesterday. It is we're crucifying ourselves we're dying to self every day we're trying and we're not trying not to live by the flesh so if that just happened think about that he just died for you but it was only one death and one resurrection over 2,000 years ago that whoever surrenders to God that whoever believes in him believes in that gospel believes in the resurrection believes in the Holy Spirit and uh, will have everlasting eternal life. We'll have access to the Father. It's amazing. Okay, cool. An epiphany of Christ. May you experience the love of Christ 
though it is too great to understand fully. <laughs> Ephesians 3.19 To experience an epiphany from the Greek epiphania, manifestation striking appearance, means to have a sudden spiritual realization that allows you to grasp a profound truth or understand a mystery from a new perspective. That's that paradigm shift. That's the revolution. That's, uh, wow. You need an epiphany of Christ. You must come to him and have a revelation of who he is. Ignatius of Loyola taught that Christians should cultivate an ardent love for Jesus by deeply contemplating him. Deeply contemplating him. This good practice also draws you into union with Christ. The spiritual exercises, Loyola, pray, Lord, grant me that I may see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly. You need to experience Christ's love, even though it's too great to fully comprehend. This needn't be limited to sudden dramatic experiences. What is needed most is to make a deliberate daily commitment to Jesus and to experience a lifelong series of epiphanies of Christ and his love. The Bible says they looked unto him and were lightened. Psalm 34, 5. Monday was probably awesome. It went well. Maybe there were some things God asked you to do. You needed to be obedient. And Tuesday, now Wednesday is gone. And you saw God. You woke up and saw the creation and epiphanies start to happen of the the holiness of God. It took a little bit with me, but after you listen to enough sermons, different preachers uh, that get deep about the Holy Spirit and the power of Christ, and then you see him work uh, through others or in this world and miraculously change things and change people's hearts that you never thought would change. Once you see him work and then you, like I said, you hear like um, people that teach the Holy Spirit or holiness of God, Francis Chan, he gets it. Or you just don't even need that, just the Bible. Woe is me, I am a man of unclean lips. There's an unapproachable life, unapproachable so. It's pretty amazing. Even he said, woe is me, and he was like, good. But he said, no man is good, the Bible says. But I mean, like he was, wow, holiness of God, all right? He's your God, he is your loving Father. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, all right? And he forgives you and forgives you again and again, just with that one that one crucifixion, that one death on the cross of the perfect, sinless man, Jesus Christ. All right? Cool. That blood, his body being broken, his blood, that saves us. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So that's all that needed to happen. All right? <sighs> Pretty serious stuff, right? All right. Let's see what the prayer says. Lord, help me to see you more clearly in all your glory and marvelous love. May I love you more dearly than ever. May I follow you more closely wherever you lead me. All right? Put him right here. His arm around you. Or he's right there with you the whole time you're walking. Ah, oh, man. The holiness of God. The holiness. Wow. It's pretty amazing. All right? Cool. So pray about that. Pray on ways that he can reveal himself to you. Uh, pray for more of his wisdom and knowledge. Uh, Jesus uh, performed miracles here, and he said we would do even greater things, greater things than these, and he was only doing that for like three years, even though he lived until about 33. Uh, but the, the Bible only records it. Um, yeah, just from meeting John the Baptist on until his crucifixion. But... Uh, the same power that Jesus Christ had, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, we have. Jeremy Camp song, right? <laughs> so believe it. It is through faith, all right? Through faith in what the Word of God says. What Jesus has said, what God has said, uh, it's through faith. So miracles. I know a lot of people are hurting physically, mentally, spiritually. 
but draw nearer to God. If there is any sin in your life, pray about that, that you get rid of all that, because we wouldn't want sin to sneak in, and that is deadly, deadly toxic to you. It is poison. Uh, all right, don't let it happen. We're supposed to lead holy, righteous lives. Um, but whatever is to happen, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, and just say thank you, thank you, God, thank you. I love you. All right? And you're going to be a living, breathing, walking testimony. Uh, he will work out all things for good uh, for us that believe in Him. All right? Be in prayer. Be in prayer is super important. Pray for your friends, family, and coworkers. Pray for your family. Pray for your spouse. All right? Pray to get a close relationship with God. Uh, pray for your community and your state. And stay focused, though. Stay super focused on God. That means a laser sharp focus. Forget about the distractions of the world. All right? The distractions of the world. It's good to ask for his knowledge, wisdom, and insight. It's good to know a little bit what's going on, but it only takes about five minutes and you got it. You kind of know what's going on. But what's going on in your life? Uh, Kirk Cameron says, don't worry about the White House. Worry about your house. All right? Uh, Christians should definitely vote. Vote for the right candidate and stuff. But you need to square away. Uh, your house all right and to be bold and courageous and be an accountability partner be in the body of Christ and those are the places that we gather together and we can help uh, strengthen one another all right super important I love you love it be in prayer pray for me always uh, sh like and share these things share these things with friends that need it all right what else be in the word of God we just read it that stuff gotta be in the word of God all right and uh, pray tonight. Get on your knees. Talk to your Heavenly Father. Abba, right? Abba, I love you. See you. Bye.